Do you like art? I think art is really boring. I don't understand how everyone except me is so fascinated by art galleries and paintings. My friends drag me from exhibit to exhibit, and I smile and act interested, but really I'm just being polite. When I go there, I'm bored the whole time and spend the whole time wondering when we can go home. Oh, yes, I do like art, like visual art, dance, music, and theater. And I tried to learn how to paint and draw when I was little, since it is art that can improve my sense of beauty and spice up my life. Yes, I do. I'm interested in art. It is a very important part of our heritage and culture. Have you ever visited an art gallery? When I was a student, we took a few trips to art galleries, but I never really found them very interesting. Everyone around me was so fascinated by all the paintings and stories behind them, but not me. So I ended up spending the whole trip just playing with my smartphone. In my travels, I visited some famous art galleries. I hate art galleries. I love art, um, including the art in museums and galleries, but I hate art gallery experience. I don't like the way art galleries assert their presumed superior knowledge and their unarguable superior power to storm you into following their pre-planned path of moving through the gallery. Art galleries are pitifully eager to get you into their control. Sure, last year I and my family went to an art gallery in a suburb. It was foggy, but we made that trip a long time ago. The art gallery is totally digital, very few staffs. One person can enter into the gallery by making reservation with one's ID card. Besides, every artwork, no matter painting or sculpture, is displayed by virtual projection. It's really an awesome trip. Yes, I've been to many kinds of art galleries to visit shows and exhibitions of all kinds, like painting, calligraphy, installation, and sculpture. For example, I paid a visit to New South Wales Art Gallery in Sydney last year. Unfortunately, I have never visited an art gallery before. However, I would definitely like to visit one in the near future. I'm looking forward to this experience. Is there any artwork on the walls in your room? No, not really. I like hanging mirrors in my room because it makes it feel much bigger and I can always check my appearance. I think that mirrors are much more interesting than art. I have some really big, beautiful mirrors, and I'm always looking for other ones to add to my collection. Yes, there is an oil painting on the wall in my bedroom where I can see things like ocean and a white sand beach. I like it a lot since it can remind me of how beautiful our world is. Oh, to be frank, I prefer my room to be clean and neat without any artworks. Well, in the future, I would consider having one if there's any chance. Yes, the walls in my place all have some kind of artwork on them. I like having paintings that make me feel good. I just like to be surrounded by paintings that make me feel calm or emotional feelings that don't depress me. There's a painting on my wall. It is a painting of a beautiful garden with different kinds of flowers in it.
This was a gift that I received from my best friend on my twentieth birthday. Have you ever had art classes? When I was in grade school, my parents had me go to some art classes for traditional Chinese art and calligraphy. And although I was good at it at the time, I never did anything with it the rest of my life. I think I'll send my future children to art classes, and hopefully they'll make more use of those skills than I did. Yes, I did. As what I mentioned earlier, I once attended a drawing class when I was in primary school, and I learned basic things like sketching and watercolor painting.、Uh, to be honest, barely have I had a chance to attend my art classes before. Well, in the future, I'm willing to have a try if there's any chance attending a classes of dance or music. Yes, I had art classes when I was in primary school. Our teacher taught us how to draw and make different crafts. It was very fun, and I think that was when I developed an interest for art. Okay, here is a pretty common part one topic: the topic of art. Let's have a listen to the four questions. Whoa, and I missed the first question. Let's try that again. Do you like art? And sample one. I think art is really boring. I don't understand how everyone except me is so fascinated by art galleries and paintings. My friends drag me from exhibit to exhibit, and I smile and act interested. But really, I'm just being polite. When I go there, I'm bored the whole time and spend the whole time wondering when we can go home. Okay, let's see what's good. There is really anything bad about this answer,、um, except maybe. I mean, here, why didn't he put some stress on this? So, I don't understand how everyone except me is so fascinated. Let's just listen to that again. Understand how everyone except me is so fascinated by. Oh, we put the stress on fascinated. Okay.、Um, Vocabulary-wise, he uses the words art galleries, and he uses exhibit, and exhibit again. Drag, drag is a word we don't see a lot, and actually here he's using drag idiomatically because I'm sure his friends don't actually drag him. So when we say your friends drag you from one place to another place, it just means you are unwilling, and they kind of force you to go. You don't want to go, but they force you. So. His friends drag him from exhibit to exhibit. This is good language, and I smile and act interested. I'm just being polite. No, nothing else except maybe. Let's see here.、Uh, when I go there, I'm bored the whole time, and spend. Notice here, this verb doesn't have an object. Because the object is the same all the time. I go there. I'm bored and spend. So the subject is omitted because it's the same subject as we see here. All right. Let's move on to sample two. Oh yes, I do like art. Like vis. Okay. She says heart. It's not heart. It's art. Art, dance, music, and theater. Okay. Here's some good vocabulary. Dance. Oh, why is there no comma there? Let's put a comma here. Okay, so dance and music—that's not really anything outstanding. Visual art—that's a word we don't see used a lot. That's pretty good vocabulary. And theater, and I try to learn how to paint and draw. Learn, learn, not lure. I try to learn. How to paint and draw when I was little. Draw, not draw. <laughs> okay, so she mispronounces quite a few words. And why is she not using the past tense? It should be learned, right? Because when I was little, so I learned how to draw and paint when I was little. Problems with tenses. Since it is art that can improve my sense of beauty and spice up my life. 
and I try to learn oh this should be in the past tense I try to learn uh, now that I listen to this again I think this is one sentence okay I, so since I tried to learn how to paint and draw when I was little since it is art then can prove my sense of beauty <laughs> but when you are little <laughs> Are you even thinking about your sense of beauty? <laughs> that doesn't make sense to me. Spice up my life. Do young children think about how art can spice up their life? I don't know. I don't think so. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Um, there's nothing wrong with the language. It just doesn't make sense. Okay, here's sample three. Yes, I do. I'm interested in art. It is a very important part of our heritage and culture. And that's the whole answer. <laughs> okay, so no examples. He does give us an answer. Yes, he's interested in. Yes, I do. Now, wait a second. Why is it yes, I do? Uh, what was the question again? The question is, are you interested in art? Let's go back there. Or do you like art? Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, that's fine. Yes, I do. I'm interested in art. It's an important part of our heritage and culture. Examples. Examples are lacking. Very, very short answer okay next question have you ever visited an art gallery and here we have sample one when I was a student we took a few trips to art galleries but took a few trips little stress there and few I never really found them very interesting everyone around me was so fascinated by all the paintings and stories behind them behind them Oh, I mean, this guy is a native speaker, so of course his pronunciation is going to be really good. But not me. <laughs> so I ended up spending the whole trip just playing with my smartphone. I ended up V-I-N-G. I ended up spending the whole trip. Yeah. Uh, if you're going to use end up, but you have to put a gerund after that. Um, what can I say? He just, it doesn't find them interesting. <laughs> he explains why. He took a few trips to art galleries. He found them really boring, even though everyone else is very fascinated by them. And he spent his time playing with his phone. I mean, pretty easy to understand. There's not much you can add to that. Great answer. Here's sample two. In my travels, I visited some famous art galleries. I hate art galleries. I hate art galleries, okay? I love... And if I were her, I would just say, uh, in my travels, I have visited, unless she finished traveling. So in my travels, I have visited some famous art galleries, but I hate, just put a but here. So just two things I would change. So I have visited, but I hate art galleries. I do like the stress on hate though. I love art, um, including the art in museums and galleries, but I hate art gallery experience. I Okay, so here we have to say the. I hate the art gallery experience. So if you're going to put experience together with another noun, so here we have art gallery plus experience, then the first noun cannot be in the plural. So it cannot be art galleries. It must be art gallery experience. And we have to say the. So it's the noun experience. And the noun must be singular. So I hate the art gallery experience. Like the way art galleries assert their presumed superior knowledge and. What is happening here? This woman sounds like she swallowed a dictionary. Assert their presumed, presumed superior knowledge. Let's go back here. Why does she hate them so much? Gallery experience. I don't like the way art galleries assert their presumed superior knowledge and. I don't know why she says presumed. Uh, <clears throat> it's just presumed. Some good vocabulary here. Your unarguable superior power to storm you into following their pre-planned path. <laughs> but she's reading so fast, I can't hear what she's saying. Uh, okay, the presumed is good. Superior knowledge, uh, not bad. Unarguable superior power. 
I don't know what power the art gallery has because I can't understand this word she says to do what. Assume the superior knowledge and their unarguable superior power to storm you into falling. Storm you. I don't know what this word is. To storm you into following their her pre-planned path of moving through the gallery. Okay, so she doesn't like the way that you have to follow a specific path when you move from one exhibition to another exhibition in an art gallery. Okay, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of vocabulary here. <laughs> I, th I think she's going over the top here. <laughs> I don't think it's necessary to use vocabulary that sounds so unnatural in part one. Part three, it's okay. Part one, who on earth is going to say that art galleries have presumed power? Sorry, presumed superior knowledge and unarguable superior power. Not many people. I don't think a whole lot of. I don't. I don't think too many art galleries are really out on a power trip to force people to follow a specific pre-planned route as they move through the art gallery. But okay. Path of moving through the gallery. Art galleries are pitifully eager to get you into their control. Okay, she hates art galleries. They're pitifully eager. Actually, these two words do go well together. Although when she said pitifully, did she say pitifully or pitifully? Moving through the gallery. Art galleries are pitifully eager to get you into. Uh, I just realized something now. Okay, I got it. She's trying to use the adjective in an adverbial form. So petty, like if you are interested in things that are not very important, you're petty, right? But there's no word like pitifully. So that's why initially I thought she was saying pitifully, but no, she is saying pitifully, but this word does not exist in English. So if I were her, I would say art galleries are uh, eager overly eager why don't we use the adverb overly overly and eager go together well so art calories are overly eager to get you into their control but in english there is no word like pedifly there is a word like petty that's the adjective there is a word like pettiful but no pedifly unfortunately okay so this woman went way overboard on the vocabulary she was using sometimes unsuccessfully in part one don't need to go that hard on the vocabulary in part one sample three sure last year i and my family went to an art gallery in a suburb it was foggy but we made that trip a long time ago some interesting things here that don't seem really connected to me she mentioned they went to an art gallery in a suburb, okay, and then she doesn't take this idea any further. And she says it was foggy, okay, but we made that trip a long time ago. <laughs> but the ideas of suburb and the weather and how long ago it happened are totally disconnected. I, I don't see the connection between any of those. We made that trip a long time ago. Mm -hmm. The art gallery is totally digital. Yeah, but see now, she just said it happened a long time ago, but then she doesn't use the past tense. She doesn't say the art gallery was totally digital. I mean, we don't know if it's still the case now. So let's use the past tense. The art gallery was totally digital. I do like the totally digital, but I don't like the tense. It's totally digital. Very few steps. In English, there's no word like staffs. There's only staff. So very few staff members, you could say that, but there's no staffs. One person can enter into the gallery by making a reservation with one's ID card. One person can enter. Why is it only one person? Only one person can go in at a time? I'm not sure. I don't know why it's one person. Can enter into the gallery. Uh, can enter the gallery, not into, enter the gallery by making reservations or accountable. I should say res the word reservation is countable. So we, might, we need an article. By making a reservation, 
with one's ID card. Okay, so why not say you can enter the gallery by making a reservation with your ID card? Uh, is this online? I, I guess so. I'm not sure I shouldn't say that. This ID card designs every artwork. What is this word she's saying? Designs? She's saying design? Is she saying besides? Not sure. Designs every artwork, no matter painting or. No matter whether it is a painting. No matter whether it is a painting or a sculpture. Sculpture is displayed by virtual projection. Okay, virtual project projection. This is some good vocabulary. It's really an awesome trip. It's not trip, it's trip. And again, it's not, why is she not using the past tense? So it was really an awesome trip, not trip, trip. And here's sample four. Yes, I've been to many kinds of art galleries to visit shows and exhibitions of all kinds. Quite a strong accent. Like painting, calligraphy. And I've been to many different kinds of art galleries, like painting. Paintings? Like painting, calligraphy, installation, and sculpture. Okay, good vocabulary about art. Paintings, calligraphy, installations, and sculptures. I would make these plural, but I guess if you use the singular, it's not the end of the world. For example, I paid a visit to New South Wales Art Gallery in Sydney last year. Uh, just one thing. Uh, minor point, but it should be the. I paid a visit to the New South Wales Art Gallery in Sydney last year. I do like that she said paid a visit. It's a good use of idiomatic language. Instead of just saying I visited, she said I paid a visit. Good vocabulary. She gave an example. Okay, so let's look at the structure of the answer. Here with the answer, yes. Then she expands on her answer and she gives a little example. She doesn't say what she thought about the gallery. Maybe she could have said that because the answer is a little bit short. Maybe just evaluate the gallery. But still, it's not a bad answer. Although, like I said, she has quite a strong accent. Here is sample five. Unfortunately, I have never visited an art gallery before. However, I would definitely like to visit one in the near future. I'm looking forward to this experience. So he has a very sing-song kind of voice when he talks. Um, okay. I, I don't know what to say about this answer. I would definitely like to visit one. Well, if I could make a suggestion. If you really want to visit an art gallery and you have never done so, maybe explain why you've never done it before. Instead of just saying, well, I would definitely like to visit one in the future. Because <laughs> this does not give us a whole, lot inform a, lot, a whole lot of information. But if you explained why you've never visited an art gallery, I don't know, maybe you live very far away from the nearest art gallery or whatever the reason might be, that is going to give you more language to use in your answer than just saying, oh, I would love to do it in the future. All right, let's move on to the next question. Is there any artwork on the walls in your room? And here we have sample one. No, not really. I like hanging. <laughs> like I said before, the guy's a native speaker, so pronunciation is really good. But just listen to this again here. No, not really. I love that. No, not really. I like hanging mirrors in my room because it makes it feel much bigger and I can always check my appearance. It's a little bit weird. There's nothing wrong in the language. I think that mirrors are much more interesting than art. I have some really big, beautiful mirrors. Notice the little pause there. I have some really big, beautiful mirrors. It's a slight pause there between the two adjectives. I think that mirrors are much more interesting than art. I have some really big, beautiful mirrors, and I'm always looking for other ones to add to my collection. 
a terrific answer. I'm always looking for other ones to add to my collection. I mean, you could use this phrase even when talking about art, right? If you have some art in your home or paintings on your wall, you could say, yeah, I have tons of paintings on my wall. I particularly like this and this and this artist, and I'm always looking for other paintings to add to my collection. So this is quite a versatile phrase he's using here. Let's move on to sample two. Yes, there is an oil painting on the wall in my bedroom where I can see things like ocean and... Now this is a little bit confusing, isn't it? Um, there's an oil painting on my wall, or on the wall, where I can see things. Now to me, it sounds like she can see things on the wall. When I look at this, it doesn't seem to me like she can see things in the painting. It seems to me like she can see things on the wall. It's a little bit strange. So, if I could make a suggestion, I'd say there's an oil, <laughs> there's an oil painting on my wall which depicts the ocean. Because that's what paintings do. paintings do. They depict things. They show things. So there's a painting on my wall which depict things like the ocean and a white sand beach. And a white sand beach. I like it a lot since it can remind me of how beautiful our world is. World. How beautiful our world is. Not our word. Uh, the grammar here is pretty good. I like it a lot since it can remind me. And then look at this noun phrase here. Here we have the preposition of, right? And here's the noun phrase, how beautiful our world is. Good grammar, poor pronunciation. It's world, not word. Word is. Oh, I guess this is the alternative answer. So from here on, she's answering the question as though she had no paintings on her wall. Oh, to be frank, I prefer my room to be clean and neat without any artworks. Okay. Well, in the future... The future. The. I would consider having one if there's any chance. Now, this answer doesn't make any sense. Because she just said, I prefer my room to be clean and neat without anything on the wall or any artwork. But then immediately after that, she said, I would consider having one if there's any chance. <laughs> but you just said you don't want any artwork. Now you're saying, I'd love to have one if there's any chance. That is very incoherent. Here's sample three. Yes, the walls in my place all have some kind of artwork on them. Uh, let's see, what's good about this is, instead of saying in my home or in my apartment, she says in my place. And that's when she says them, she says them. You might think that's poor pronunciation, but actually, Native speakers often say dem instead of them. So, off to a good start here. Some kind of artwork on them. I like having paintings that make me feel good. I just like to be surrounded by paintings that make me feel calm or emotional feelings that... Um, problem here. Uh, make me feel calm. Here's the verb. Here's the adjective make me feel calm or emotional feelings. If we take this verb, then we have feel emotional feelings. Now, what on earth does that mean? How do you feel emotional feelings? <sighs> this is not a language that is used in English. So you could say make me feel calm or not, not depressed, adjective, adjective, uh, paintings that make me feel calm or not depressed. Adjective, adjective, and then we don't have this noun, and this is anyway not something we, we say in English. All right, here's sample four. There's a painting on my wall. It is a painting of a beautiful garden with different kinds of flowers in it. Mm -hmm. This was a gift that I received from my best friend on my 20th birthday. short but it answers the question <laughs> uh, the problem is if all your answers are going to be this short 
and if all your sentences are going to be this simple I mean even though the grammar is error free the sentences are a bit simple aren't they there's a painting on my wall it's a painting of a beautiful garden with different kinds of flowers in it this was a gift uh, okay, I guess the grammar's not that simple I mean look at this here here we have a relative clause now nah, I take that back the grammar is okay it's just a little bit short uh, if you have an answer once or twice that's quite short not a big deal but don't make a habit out of giving very short answers let's move on to the next question have you ever had art classes here is sample one when I was in grade school my parents had me go to some oh, look at this here my parents had me go so kind of like my parents forced me to go art classes for traditional Chinese art and calligraphy and although I was good at what is the stress on although and although actually I shouldn't say stress the intonation there although so we know some contrasting ideas coming at the time I never did anything with it the rest of my life some more really good idiomatic language I never did anything with it so he didn't pursue the art and calligraphy that he learned earlier or he didn't use it in any other way in his life I never did anything with it good language to my life I think I'll send my future children to art classes and hopefully they'll make more use of those skills than I did good he switches between the future will to the past well he's a native speaker so I guess he makes it look easy here's the second sample uh, yes I did as what I mentioned earlier I it's not as what I mentioned earlier it's as I mentioned earlier and I don't know why this is in the past oh yeah the question is did you have art classes what was the question I forgot have you ever had oh so yes I have not yes I did so yes I have as I mentioned earlier there's no what here as I mentioned earlier yes I did as what I mentioned earlier I once attended a there's no was just I attended in class when I was in primary school and I learned the basic thing I learned learned like sketching and watercolor painting Okay, here's some vocabulary directly related to art. We've got sketching, it's pretty good. Like if you use a pencil to draw, I guess watercolor. Yeah, this might be a less commonly used word. Uh, to be honest, barely have I had a chance to attend my art classes before. <laughs> what is happening now? <laughs> I don't understand. Okay, so she mentioned earlier she attended a drawing class and then right after that she says, uh, to be honest, barely have I had a chance to attend my art classes before. Don't know what that means. But even, even if this did fit into her answer, the word order is not right. It should be, I barely... I barely had the chance to attend my art classes and there's no before I barely had the chance the barely has to go with the verb I barely had the chance <laughs> depending on the situation I suppose it could be a uh, I don't know what the situation is here because I don't understand why she's saying this to attend my art classes before well in the future I'm willing to have a try if there's any chance attending a classes of dance or music I think maybe what she is trying to say is that when she was in primary school she did attend some basic lessons where she learned how to sketch and paint in watercolor but she would like to learn more because these classes were really not enough maybe not barely she uses the word barely here I think what she's trying to say is 
she didn't learn enough in those classes and she would like to take what she learned there further and build on that so in the future she'd like to take uh, now here she says a classes of dance that's not quite correct it should be a dance class so in the future she'd like to attend a dance class or a music class attend a dance class or a music class I think that's what she's trying to say okay here is the last sample yes I had art classes when I was in primary school mm -hmm. our teacher taught us how to draw and make different crafts no example of the crafts <laughs> it was diff very fun whoa why is there a the there what and make different crafts it was diff very fun I don't know this is an odd mistake to make so it was very fun in English we don't usually say something is very fun even though you will hear some people say that but to most English speakers it doesn't sound right you say very fun it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun and I think that was when I developed an interest for art. In art. I think that was when I developed an interest in art. Not a bad answer, um, but a couple of mistakes with the vocabulary. And if he, because he just said different arts, different crafts here. I think if he gave just a little example or a few examples here, it would really do wonders for his score. Okay, I hope you found this video on art useful.